How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at The Little Drummer Boy. This is from 1968 and is directed by Arthur Rankin Jr. and Jules Bass. So yes, another stop motion Rankin Bass Christmas special. These things are always great. It's small but very powerful doses of Christmas spirit in these things. And if you need something to get you in that Christmassy mood, I, I cannot recommend these things enough. Uh, this movie stars Ted Eccles, Jose Ferrer, uh, June Foray, Paul Fries, and Miss Greer Garson as our storyteller. These things always had a narrator. Uh, but this is another song adaptation, which I think is really cool. Having the original song and then giving the kids a story and some visuals to go with it. And always a great exercise in creativity to, you know, expand these things into a little short. Um, this song was by Katherine Davis, Henry Onorati, and Harry Simone. And yeah... Always cool to get another adaptation. Whenever I hear Rudolph and Frosty on the radio, I always think of the Rankin Bass shorts. Um, and this one was a really fun one. It's also kind of a different one because when you think Christmassy shorts, you think snow and Santa and stuff. But this one's actually a Bible time story, which you think you would think of first because that's the whole point of this whole thing. Uh, but I really do like that sort of sets it apart and gives it this whole different feel. It, it makes it very, very unique to, you know, see sand instead of snow. And I also like, you know, it, it's in Bible times, but not a straight adaptation of a, a Bible story. And in turn, it kind of runs around and does its own weird little cartoon thing, but still fits... Uh, still fits enough when you're a kid in children's church that this might be the Rankin Bass you get to see and whenever they showed cartoons that was always super super fun and I also like this story is a little more hard-hitting than, than you might think the little drummer boy we always see him there smiling and hitting his drums he actually had a super dark and tough life and this story really does speak a very potent and powerful message about forgiving other people and how the hatred can hold you yourself down. And yeah, the story itself is really potent and leads to a very intense ending when they actually get to adapting the Little Drummer Boy song. It is a very epic and powerful moment, one of the hardest hitting moments in Rankin Bass probably and overall why this one doesn't get played as much as Rudolph and Frosty it, it definitely is a classic and picking up this uh they put out a Rankin Bass complete Christmas collection on Blu-ray which I am so happy they did but I looked to the back and it actually lists a Little Drummer Boy book 2 which I haven't seen yet but after watching this one I really do want to check it out. Anyway, let's talk a bit about the plot to analyze it. I won't do any major spoilers, although if you've seen the song, you kind of know where this is going. Uh, but let's, let's dig a little deeper. We open up with the little drummer boy, and he's walking through the desert with his three animals, and as he's playing his drums, the animals are dancing around. It's quite the spectacle. He's got them mesmerized and they're, you know, they're dancing animals. That's crazy. Well, that, of course, draws the attention. I believe his name is the King of the Desert Circus. Uh, but yeah, he sees this amazing act and says, I must have it. And he kidnaps him. And we even get a good bit of the King of the, the, king of the Desert Circus's character where he says, I got to make money, I have to survive, and he is going after the gold. But you see, a lot of this short does depict people with rough lives, and he's like, you have to be in my circus now. And then we get a flashback and find out the little drummer boy's surprisingly dark backstory. 
kids could take a lot more back in the day. Um, he is on a farm with his parents, and he gets his drum. And he's so good and happy, all the animals love it. But then thieves come to his parents' place. And the Bible does say the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what they do here. They take all the animals, they kill the kid's parents, and they set the place on fire. So now you have the little drummer boy. His drum is like the last symbol he got of his parents' love. And these seemingly random animals that are his friends are actually the other survivors from the farm. It's quite the horrific event. And the kid has actually gotten, like, tough as nails. Like, you see the little drummer boy smiling and stuff. No, no, no. The little drummer boy is surprisingly hardcore. He hates all humans. He says, human society burned me. I hate everybody else. And he is just forcing himself to live on his own and just not interact with anybody. And the movie will go on to talk about forgiveness and hatred. And you can really see, like, not all other humans were the, you know, thieves that killed his parents, and he doesn't really need to be alone, and he doesn't need to be away from everybody, and he sort of built himself into a self-imposed prison. It's going to be a story with a good moral. It, it doesn't shy away from the darkness of the tale, and overall will lead to a a pretty powerful conclusion, and I think this is a really deep story for one of these little shorts here. Uh, but anyway, the other acts in the circus aren't really great. So he sends the little drummer boy out there to perform, and he has a good act, and people cheer, and, and the little drummer boy can't take it. He realizes, oh no, I've just made people happy, and causes a scene and gets the circus kicked out because I feel bad for making people happy. Well, the king of the circus will see a new target, a group of rich people passing through the desert, who it turns out are the three wise men from the nativity story, and we can, especially if we've seen the song, have a good guess where this is going. It's going to inadvertently cross paths with a very important event, and it does lead to a pretty big moment. Like, I won't say what happens at the end, but Pixar did not invent the tearjerker, and it really, when we get to the song, it feels like it's all been building up to the song, and in turn... Yeah, one of the more epic, I guess, being a biblical story, it does have more of the potential to be epic than a bunch of kids just randomly running around in suburban Christmas. Overall, it's really cool, and it's one that I can definitely recommend. I will say there is a little bit of slapstick in this that the animation isn't quite fluid enough to pull off. But other than that, I think this is a pretty good one. It's definitely one of the better ones, and I will uh, definitely be trying to get to book two before Christmas, I hope. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Christmas playlist. There's a lot of scary Christmas movies in there. But I've also talked about a few classics, and I've talked about Frosty the Snowman as well. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.